Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Patricia Barnowski Schneider. Hello and welcome back to Successful Months. I'm your host, Patty Baranowski Schneider, CEO of Christine Advisors. Today I'm joined by Director and Owner of Royal Estate Investment Group, Louis Castillo. On topic today, we're going to talk about how to think big and invest in real estate. So thank you for joining us today, Louis Castillo. Before we jump in, tell us a little bit about who you are. Okay, <clears throat> my name is Luis Castillo. I usually use the name Gerardo, the real name, because there's so many Luis Castillo. I'm from Nicaragua, came to this country due to a war in my country. Uh, so my parents sent me to Costa Rica to study economy. And from there, I could not come back because if I come back, I will have to fight uh, on the communist line, uh, something that I'm completely against. I'm more into uh, freedom, of course. And it took me a while because when I came to this country, uh, you come with no permits to work with nobody to help you because they took everything from my parents. So we were like a, from, a, from one moment to another one, you had nothing in, in your life. So you have used to do yourself, uh, that's it. So at that time, recall that I came with my uh, sweetheart high school, which is today my wife. So I've been married for that many years. Yeah. And it took me time because of the permit to work. Uh, but the interesting is that uh, where I had not even permit to work, but already own a real estate. So, because basically there is a different ways that you can just achieve without expecting anything, anybody to give you anything. So I got involved into real estate. I didn't know how to go into large properties. So I always look for a second way of earning money. Uh, rapidly during the time that I worked for somebody, when I got a permit to work, I worked for somebody, I got uh, allergic of the only two. <laughs> so I started working by myself after 15 years working for a company. Mm -hmm. And like Jim Rome said, during the day, uh, work for your life and during the night, work for your fortune. So that's what I did. I always had something else going on. Even after I was doing well with uh, uh, one of the businesses that I have, which is with the US government. And I always keep looking something else, what else to do. So Warren Buffett said, don't try to do so many things. Just be master in one and then do the next one. And you repeat it over and over and over. <laughs> yeah, so that's where I come from, from Nicaragua. <laughs> wow, that's actually a pretty impressive story. Huh. All right, so why don't you give us a quick rundown of what people can learn from Royal, Royal Estate Investment Group? One of the things that I always call my attention, I don't know anybody from the audience, they can uh, um, think like, okay, if you see a building, have you ever thought yourself why you don't own that building? I mean, people think about that. And you, we, always, we, have, we always have those paradigms that uh, think about, I'm too old. I mean, I'm, not, I'm old, but I'm, <laughs> I'm starting something new. Right. So uh, Kentucky, the coronal, for Kentucky Fried Chicken, at 70 years old, he'd become a millionaire. So it's never late. So so even if it's not for you to be to be rich or to be wealthy, think about what to leave to your loved ones. I mean, mm -hmm. I have friends that sometimes they ask me, look, I'm retired, I'm done. Why do I want to continue? The, the first thing that I said, look, imagine if you would have come to the United States, like my country, like me, for example, if I would have come to the United States, but I already have 1,000 units apartments. Yeah. I mean, my life would it be better? Of course. So you have to think what you leave behind. That mentality that you don't take everything to the with you? Yes, you're right. But you also leave that to your loved ones. So you got to do the things for to give, not to reset. If the people who think that way because they're thinking about what I'm taking. And I cannot take it, so I don't continue to work. Right. So... Don't think about you taking it. Think about you to give it. Dale Carnegie, if Dale Carnegie has been the, the wealthy, the richest man on earth, if today uh, money of uh, Dale Carnegie would it be equal to $400 billion, 
There's no one person who does that much. So he gave away 90% for charity. Wow. How That's beautiful is that? Awesome. Yeah. So, so I think what people can learn from me answer the question of, from the real estate investment, think big, think big. Don't buy one property. Buy 100 units, 100 mm -hmm. complex apartment. I would say, yes, but I cannot do that because one, I don't have the money or I don't qualify or whatever reason you might think of, somebody else has it. Then you have to teamwork with that person. Right. What do you have that I can give so we can put it together and get it done? Basically, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it, well, first of all, I love how you used, um, you know, KFC because it is true. I mean, people don't realize how many people, I think just looking here, like Isaac Newton, Abraham Lincoln, I remember researching all of this, Disney, J.K. Rowling. I mean, so many people had failed miserably but didn't give up and they kept continuing, continuing. And, you know, it's out there. And the part about teamwork, like you say, like, you know, even with, I guess, the big thing now, affiliate marketing, um, you know, or influencer marketing and things like that. Like, I see that's like such a big thing. And I know some people say, oh, no, that's like a pyramid scheme, but it's not. It's like if I have so much connection and you have so much connection. We work together and that can, you know, expand your reach. And that happens all the time. And it's true. Like they always say, you know, hang out with people smarter than yourself. I mean, it is true. You lean on each other. And, and yeah, if you don't have it, someone else will. And how can you make this a win-win for everybody? So that's actually pretty awesome. Yep. And and, and something important that I will say, look, um, I know they're talking about the, the premier skin and all that. Yeah. That's a way you're saying, I don't want to get involved because I cannot do that. Yeah. That might be for some people. Yeah. So, you know, get getting anything because everything is about sell. I mean, if you're not, if you're, if you're telling me that you're not selling, mm -hmm. that, that's mean you're, you're telling, you're selling me that you're not selling. <laughs> right. So, so basically it's a, yeah, everything is about selling, but, but the difference from the salesperson mm -hmm. to someone else who calls non salesperson right. is that you want to, you worry about somebody else benefit, mm -hmm. not you. Yeah. So don't, if you don't want to call them not to sell, then don't right. sell it. Yeah. But, Think about how can you bring joy to other people? How can you bring better health uh, or anything else that you might bring to someone? And learn those places that they're hard to sell. Yeah. Why don't you go learn? Take the training. So yeah. when you go to sell what is not what is easy to sell, then you be a star. Yeah. So learn from the difficult one. Yeah. So I even in my time, I even sell timeshare. Uh, and it's very hard. I was a rookie of the year. Some places there for the <laughs> one of those awards. But that helped me. That gave me the basis to accept rejection as breakfast, as lunch, and as dinner. Yeah. yeah. So the more no's you get, the closer you're for the yes. So just accept life the way it is and just move on. Yeah. I mean, I always tell people, you know, it's one of my famous words. It's not about you. It's about your customers, your investors, how you know, whoever you're working with. And you have to do what's best for them. It's not about you. And learning, like, I'm a continuous learner. Like, first of all, I'm a perfectionist. Like, I graduated high school valedictorian. I graduated, you know, with my master's degree with a 4.0 average. Like, I'm always trying to learn. But even now, I, I got all that. I have a business. And it's not like I say, okay, I did it all. I'm done. I am constantly learning, getting certi you know, cert certified in every type of thing. I see jobs out there. Like, what are they looking for, for either investor relations or public relations or marketing person? Do I have that skill? If not, I need to get that skill. You know, you have to constantly evolve and keep up with the times. And if people want to be lazy and sit back and don't do anything, life, you know, you, you, life's what you make of it. If you don't put in the effort, you don't get the reward. It's just how it is. Yeah, I, I was, I'm very analytical too. Um, not as much as perfectionist like you, but analytical. Right. And I always keep something in mind. It's better to have ignorance on fire mm -hmm. than knowledge on ice. Yeah. So, so anything you learn, if you don't put action to it, nothing's going to happen. Right. I mean, so I have the book someplace there <laughs> on Cardone. Mm -hmm. I like it because whatever your goal it is, multiply by 10. Yeah. It's going to scare you. But guess what? If you don't put your goals to achieve such a large goals, mm -hmm. and you're you feel comfortable to achieve, let's say, a hundred thousand dollars a year, guess what? You might make a hundred thousand dollars a day. Maybe you achieve your goal. But what about if your your goal was a million dollars a year? You might don't make it, but 
most likely you're going to go to two hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. So, so that's uh, something you keep in perspective. Yeah, dream big. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, seeing how you're involved with the real estate world, can you tell us a little bit about your process? Like, what intrigues you? What you look for? And like, how do you navigate the process? Yeah, something that I've really, um, uh, something that I really surprised me on the process. You know the Pareto law, which is the eighty twenty. Yeah. Uh, it's like a, a lot less. It's like <laughs> seven ninety three. <laughs> so Pareto law is like at 1800, 19, beginning 1900. Nowadays, is that Pareto law is targeting smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. So it takes courage, takes dedication, and takes teamwork. Right. They, somebody told someone told me real estate doesn't have an eye. Real estate, so, <laughs> it have an eye. so it's a teamwork. Yeah. So the process is that you need to get a team, and that's something that I'm doing. I'm trying to do something new um, to create a larger team. team. Um, so the process that we look for a property, we have to go through close to like 100 underwriting properties. There is a, there is a, there is a pie, and the pie has different people who bring different values. So the team is formed by the values of the people, by the value of each of the members that bring into the team. So you might find the property, that's one value. Mm -hmm. But then somebody else might be very strong in underwriting and due diligence, that might, that's another value. And then the asset management, you might not be good at that, or maybe you're busy in another, another kind of job. So you have somebody in the team who takes over that. So the way that we do it is that we, we take a list at a $10 million property, um, we said, okay, we need $3 million down payment. We don't have the $3 million. Okay, somebody has the $3 million. Mm -hmm. But if we go there and we tell, listen, hey, you know what? Uh, why don't we partner? And then somebody put a small piece, somebody put another piece. There's some there's some of them, they call them limited partnership. Mm -hmm. Some of them, the general partnership. Mm -hmm. The limited partnership, they don't get involved into it. And all these transactions, they're, they're, they're registered with Security Exchange Commissioner. Mm -hmm. People that don't know what Security Exchange Commissioner is, the same entity who regulate regulate uh, the the Wall Street. Mm -hmm. So we have to register because we we make we we're making an offering to people who they're not active in the transaction. Mm -hmm. So we have to be registered. So once once this, so once we find the property, we go through the due diligence, and the due diligence is to what is to confirm what the T12, which is trailing 12, is like a PL, perfect and lost. And then you have the rent roll. And we have to match that those what the seller says it is is what it is. Once we take over, uh, what during the process of taking over, we need to start looking for investors. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things which is very difficult. And that goes back to the basic that we were talking about, about how to contact other people or marketing. So the same technique that can be used in all other business, you need to put it in place because one more time, you're selling. Yes, you're kind of selling, but but it's but here it's like a we don't earn from the we don't earn from the investor. The investor put the money and they get a rate of return. We all get the same rate of return. And you, somebody might ask you, what is the rate of return? Usually it's like a 16 to 20% per year. I have people that say, wow, that's a lot. How do you get 20%, 80%? I said, okay, if you go to the REITs, R-E-T-S, the, the real estate investment trust funds that mm -hmm. they do and, and that they sell on the Wall Street, mm -hmm. normally they, Blackstone, we got some kind of news recently about Blackstone that we're calling the investor that we're calling for the investment and Blackstone, they have to sell some shares, of MGM shares, so they can so they can give the money back because all the money they invested for a long term. Mm -hmm. Can we just say I'm out because it's a long term, it's a real estate. So so means that once the money is invested, we have to hold it for three, three four, five years. Mm -hmm. And but at the same time, uh, the investor receive the funds every quarter of the month of their income. So back to Blackstone, they pay 6% or 8% or 7 whatever it is, but it's, it's one digit percentage. Instead of getting that amount in this syndication 
system that we use in real estate, we pay double digits. And the reason behind is because you're getting paid of the return of the investment of a large property, for, which is the net operating income, expenses minus uh, the, the, the income minus the expenses, you got the net operating income. So out of that, then uh, uh, um, the REITs are going to pay to the investor. What you don't know what's going to happen, and they don't share it with you, when they sell that property in five years, in 10 years, mm -hmm. almost any property is going to get a huge amount of return when you resell it in five to seven years. Mm -hmm. Most of the property, they're going to get two times or three times. Where the money go? Yeah. Let's <laughs> take with them. Or maybe they don't even sell the asset. They keep it. For all that appreciation, that's their wealth, which is you don't get. Right. When you go into syndication like this system, you do we do share that let's say we buy a ten million dollar, we sell it at 20 million. That 10 million dollars, in addition to what you get every month, we're gonna share that $10 million and so we're going to divide it between everyone. That's when it becomes the, the double digits uh, returns of the investment. Wow. So once we have that, we got the investor, we close the deal, then it becomes the asset management, which we have to, we, we manage the property management. And we have to look for companies that they're very good at that. Mm -hmm. So people, they buy one property, but you don't have all the contacts. You don't know how to manage 20 property, but you started with one. Exactly. And that's what they say. Look, it didn't go well in real estate. Yes, because you didn't get the right person involved. Right. But if you have 100, 100 units, you find the, the, the last property we closed, the company who, uh, who took over for the property manager, they have 22,000 apartments that they're managing. That's a lot of experience <laughs> for about 30 years experience. Yeah. So imagine, so, and also the management, they earn on a percentage of the income of the property. So they want to do so good. <laughs> the property manager becomes your partner. So really everything is about partnership. So, right. so everybody's thinking, listen, I, I, I would like to do that. This is a partnership. I mean, find what you don't have. You have something that we don't have, that I don't have. It might be somebody, it might be a contact, or maybe you know somebody. Anything you just need to find out, keep looking for that. Yeah, oh, it's pretty impressive. I mean, they always say it's not what you know, it's who you know. I mean, it is, it is true, but I mean, I know people like even in my industry, you know, they don't realize how much is involved in all of this. And you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is we have like an immense amount of contacts. You know, they're not a purchase database, but they're people that we've accumulated through the years between you know, webinars, conferences, newsletters, things like that. And people just don't get it. You know, it's like, I've had people say, sell me the database. That's my whole business. Like, you know, you have no idea how valuable this list is. And, you know, you know, it, it's just tricky. It's like, really, it, people have no idea how beneficial that is. So that's actually uh, really important. Um, all right. So tell me what's one tool that you carry in your toolbox, no matter what project you're working on. Books. All we have, You're always with books. <laughs> all we have one. And, and that's something that uh, your life will change when you start reading a book. Um, people say, look, but I don't like to read books. It's all about habits. Uh, one of the books says that it's like Edge, I think it is, or Atomic Habit. There's so many books about habit. If your plan is habit, because you don't read books, find books books that they're about habits. <laughs> yeah. If something is about not like to read books, find books about why you don't like to read books. So the books are there. And, and yes, there's some people that say, look, I like to listen on a podcast, on a YouTube. It's not the same because who listen to YouTube or a podcast without not doing something else? Yeah. I mean, you imagine you're sitting and listening to the YouTube and you stay like this, just listening. <laughs> no, nobody does that. You're always doing something else. Right. And your brain, you cannot do, you, we're not multitask. People, they think that way. But when you're reading a book, you can make bracket or, or parenthesis in each of the books. And you can go back to the book. And the same book, you can read it in, in one day. Yeah. Because you already took what you think. And when you read a book, don't think about what you're going to learn. Think, I heard someone, uh, and 
uh, his mad his name, but uh, well, uh, but he said when you read a book, imagine you have to go, you want to give a conference about that book. Why do you want to think that way? Because if you read a book thinking that that is for you, then you're gonna cover only the parts that is for you. But if you read a book thinking about other people, imagine how much you're gonna put in concept that you can go back and read it because you life change every year. You 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 forget things. I forget so many things. But when you go back to the book, you say, "Wow, I didn't know that I had this. I'm missing this." Today I was doing a, a different charge of how to track your goal for Darren, Darren Harry. Darren Harry is, a, is 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 the one who for third time he was the one for Two Sex Magazine. In other words, it's like a to me it's like a, the new Napoleon Hill, Darren Harry. So he he has a charge very simple. I forgot about him. The last time that I listened for Darren Harry was about four years ago. <laughs> I, I, I went back to get some, there is someone on YouTube that um, that he likes Darren Harry. So I subscribed to his channel. So now I'm, I'm going back to him and he's bringing value that I knew already, but forget about it. So when you read a book, just really thinking about others. Uh, recently, I read a book, which is Miracle, Miracle Morning, but it's for college students. Okay. I read it for my daughter. She's in finishing college. So I wanted to go to get her master. So what I did, I read the book. I helped her to put the little brackets on it. And I said, look, you don't have to read. She doesn't like to read book. Listen, if you don't read her book, it's fine. But at least read the summary that I made on the book. Right. So at least to help him, help her a little bit on something. So, so there is book for everyone. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I don't always have time to sit and read a book, but... What I do is um, I get the audiobooks when they have an audiobook, and I use that when I'm driving. So it's actually funny. This weekend I had to drive for about two, three hours each way, and I was so mad because I didn't have my audiobook because I'm by myself. I'm just sitting in traffic, and it's a good time for me to listen to everything. And I actually have another friend of mine who <clears throat> that's what she started doing as a business, reading books and then giving like an online synopsis of it trying to get more people involved if she says okay you know if you kind of see that she likes the same type of books you like and she's given us a knock maybe i'll say oh well maybe i'll check this book out so it's a way to try to draw people in to uh get them reading too but <laughs> yeah, my, my tiktok which is my daughter she's very surprised i'm on tiktok <laughs> <laughs> my tiktok is only about books it's yeah. one minute to tell you hey this is the latest book right. this is what this book is going to teach you so hope you read it so yeah good. Yeah. Okay, so that's what TikTok I mean. He used to bring value, and it's sometimes it's sad that social media people they just go for gossip. In life, you gotta go everything on a purpose. Yeah. What is your purpose to go into TikTok? What is your purpose to go into into Instagram or Facebook? You need to have a purpose. Yeah. And, and and that's basically my purpose in TikTok is to bring value. Somebody might read the book and they right. might take value yeah. out of it. But that's good then this way, you know, I know some people always go with algorithms where, you know, I have to have 100,000 connections, but if they're not valuable, what difference does it make? So at least with yours, you'll get connections of people who are interested in what you have to say, which is more important because if you sat here and told a million people read a book and only 25 of them even cared, who cares about the rest of them? The 25 that cared. Now you can communicate and say, hey, did you try this new book? Maybe they'll recommend a book, you know? So it's kind of just forming a uh, mutual connection of value for what you're into so it's actually pretty good how do people track who does like or who doesn't does like yeah how do people track i use i just throw it there and let it be there um no, I, I think it's well, yeah i think just because some of the companies it's like algorithms they have to have the most amount yeah. blah, blah blah but you know it's it's pointless i mean like I, that's why i said the whole world is changing with technology and ai and all that good stuff but it's good, but it still has a long way to go. <laughs> you know, people don't realize, and I, I, I read this in a statistic that ninety percent of the people that they're successful and getting so many likes, mm -hmm. they're broke. Yeah. So don't do what everybody does. Right. Be careful. Learn where those people, and if they if they telling you to that they drive a fancy car. Run away from them. Yeah. Car is a liability. liability. Yeah. You don't want a fancy car. <laughs> That's a wrong mentality. So you see, people like to impress that way. 
I mean, you want a fancy car, it's rented for one weekend, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, buy something that Robert Kiyosaki said that if you want to buy a car, buy a property, that property will give you an income. And from that income, you buy the liability, which is the car. That's the right way to buy a car. Yeah. Yeah, it's it. I get so many um, of these like so-called millionaires that are constantly trying to sell me products, and you know it's continuous stuff. And it's like, you know, that's cool that you're so-called millionaire, but then why are you wasting your time every day trying to sell me something? Are you really, you know? And it's true, you know. You have to. Yeah, I always say learn from learn from some. Like part of you know these um, podcasts is really. I get wanting people, you know, explain your story, explain how you're successful, how you're better than everybody else, and let people look up to you and learn from you. Because, you know, if I'm a new person, like that was one of the things I liked when I started out. I started out from the ground up. I was a receptionist and a secretary. I worked my way up. But I learned like from so many mistakes. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't always have somebody teaching me. But when I did, I like hung on to them and I'm like, tell me more, tell me more, because I wanted to learn. And, you know, I mean, it's the only way you're going to learn is make mistakes and follow what the successful people are doing. And then watch their mistakes because they don't always highlight those. But you know that's pretty much how you how you learn, and kudos to you for that. <laughs> uh, and also that uh, you are the you are the you are who your friends are. Yeah. I mean, one of the things you have to take an inventory every year is who are my friends, who are not my friends that they have the same mindset that I want to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim Rome says that it's no what how much money you're going to get is who you become during the process to get that much money. So who wants to become the same as you? Napoleon Hill in those days, in in his book, he says that he has nobody. He was imagining, imagining that J.P. Morgan and Dale Carnegie, all those multimillionaires in those days, they were sitting in his car. At that time, there were no YouTube and there were, there were no social media. So the guy has to create his own social media I was thinking, what kind of advice do I want to get from these people? Is, is JP Morgan would have do this if I would do this? Now, these days, it's a lot easier. Your friend can be someone like Warren Buffett. Yeah. You can be a friend of Warren Buffett. You can bring up a friend of Mark Zuckerberg. You can be a friend of, 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 of Steve Jobs, even if he's dead. I mean, you can be a friend from everyone. Mm-hmm. You see, you too, they yeah. give you advice. So why you want to look advice for someone who's broke? Yeah, I mean, doesn't every book that I have right there? I mean, because it's, it's <laughs> <other> book. <laughs> yeah. every book that I have there. One of the one of the things that I always keep in mind is that if it comes from someone who makes at least a million dollars, I will put it right there. Yeah, but if it not goes in another shelf. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but we have a lot true. of friends. Yeah. But even still, like when I, you know, like how I met you actually, you know, with networking and things like that. And I network with everybody because I want to learn from everybody. And I've networked with people even in the same industry as me. And I've had people say, oh, they're competitors. Keep away. I want to learn from them. Either we might be competitors, but now I've learned something new from you or you learned something new from me. Or maybe we're in the same industry, but totally different clientele. So maybe I can help you give you advice or you can help me. And, you know, like I said, the, the, um, the daily video that I do is called Been There, Done That. It's like I, I'm basically giving you free advice to learn from the mistakes I made. It doesn't cost anything. I'm just giving you free advice so that I'm trying to help you. I always say, help, help me to help you. Tell me what your problems are. I'm happy to give you my advice. But, yeah, I mean, you really have to network and, you know, learn from one another and help one another. That's one thing this world is missing a lot of. <laughs> I always think that you, the only person you're competing with is you. How, where were you yesterday and where are you today? That's your one you're competing. Are you in a better place? Do you know more? Have you gone one step up? That's your competition. Uh, know someone else. I mean, yeah. that's you. You are the one who you're competing with. So be afraid. Now that we started the year, be afraid to be in the same spot next year. Yeah. Be afraid of that. Yeah, too many people and just for get that, comfortable. You have all goals. You have yeah. to make goals that make you scare you away. Yeah. 
So you have to make those goals, those big goals, yes. I just had this conversation with somebody before because, you know, years ago I was um, a licensed skydiver and whatnot. So he wants to do a skydive to get over fear. And I, ironically, long story short, is I learned, I, I did it to get over fear heights, but I learned that there's a height perception and a depth perception. So I had no problem jumping out of a plane, but still afraid of heights. But anyway, he said that he has this fear and that's what he wanted to do this year. And I said, the funny part is it's it's all in your head. I said, until you face that fear, you're going to see how strong mentally you really are. I said, so do it. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, you have to be afraid to do something, but really do it to show how strong you really are. You know, you, you know there's a book on winning the devil. <laughs> uh, that was for 70 years was not really released okay. because the society was not ready to accept it. And the thing, what, one of the things that I said that he says is that it's about fear. And you're right, fear is just, I mean, just find, just find what somebody else has. That's it. I mean, you don't have to be uh, afraid or anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's see. Now, what are you most excited about now? I come up with something which is, um, there is another saying that it says that the human being is measured by the size of the amount of problem that you correct or you fix. So in my industry, I'm in, I'm in two industries. That one, which is the one behind me, which is the government of the United States, okay. about international financing aid. I love to do that. It's everything about underwriting, and I like that. So, and it's a residual income, which is always you have to find a residual income. Right. So cash flow is always important. <laughs> <laughs> and my industry has a couple problems. For you to learn what I learned in order to underwrite and to get access to people so we can buy property for a thousand units, a hundred units, two hundred units, all those, there's there is um a cost to get a coach, a coach. A coach costs about thirty thousand dollars at that time. I don't know now, maybe forty thousand dollars this day. There's so many people they don't have that much money. And that's one problem. So those people that don't have the money, they run away to do something, but maybe that person could be starved. Mm -hmm. Now, the other person, that the other problem is the person who has the $40,000, pays the money, and 97%, they don't close a property within a year. And who knows when they're going to close. So it's the Pareto law. I mean, they're more than 80% they don't achieve what they were supposed to achieve and they pay for that. Mm -hmm. um, the people who sell in the education, not all of them, somehow, yeah, it's a business going on, so they have to charge. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you find it like, a, if I know this guy doesn't have what it takes, why would I sell it? Yeah. So, so, so I, I'm pretty, and I'm sure they, they might say, look, I cannot measure people. So I have to sell it to everyone, and that's their their issue. They have to correct. Mm -hmm. So I came up with a solution, and I that was the last month that I came up with a solution. And I said, what about if I I have a coach? I kept my coach. I'm keeping my coach for the following year and for this for this business. So what about if I don't ask for that much money? I can be a coach for that business behind me because I'm one of the top producers for that business and then in the nation with the government but uh but in this one i'm not uh i already acquired property i already closed the deal already went through the cycle but but I, ha but I do have a coach who's gonna coach me how can i be the person in between the coach and me and them all those people they cannot pay forty thousand dollars what about if i create something the name is accountability process mm -hmm. so i'm not coaching you right i'm making you accountable to whatever you say you're going to do, you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Something that won't break that person, right. but, he has, but he can quit quit anytime he wants. Right. Because you want to know how fast you can quit. The sooner you quit, is better so you can give room to someone else. And that's that's the way of life. So let's say, that, I don't know, it could be $500, it could be $1,000. Something just to, be, to make you accountable. Right. When you say you're going to do something, Give a thousand, couple thousand dollars to someone else and tell, listen, if I don't do it by this day, you take the money. Believe me, if you do that, you're going to make that happen because you know that thousand dollars. If, if, if now you start getting training with me and, and then you know that you're going to give me $500 as a deposit, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But if you quit, you're going to lose it. Okay, what's going to happen? Yeah, you're going to think it. twice. Yeah. I'm going to lose all that money. So you're going to put some effort. So yeah. what happened if you find it properly? We close a deal. Yes, we did it. All the money you gave me is going to go back to you. Yeah, wow. Because you did it. So that's a accountability process. Now, people, they say, why are you doing that? Look, because I want more partners. Right. How can I find a partner? That was one of my questions I got along with the solution. How can I find a partner that is, that is accountable? We have to make it accountable. Mm -hmm. So let's say if that person close a property, guess what's going to happen? Louis, come with me. You help me. So now I have a new partner. And then I'm going to have another partner, then another partner, another partner. And then I'm going to have this much of each property, small, small percentage. My goal is to get minimum a thousand dollars this year. Mm -hmm. Am I if I, I develop this, I might get five thousand. But guess what? It's gonna be so many partners mm -hmm. that people they're leaving behind. Yeah. So that's something that it kind of getting me excited, but also in the position that it's gonna work or not. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if it doesn't work, we'll find a seed with a equal or greater benefit. Right. But accountability, yeah. like anybody who I forget the term, I guess it's sponsors like um a substance abuse or you know, AAA, right? Or AA. Um they if they don't have a technical sponsor making them accountable, a lot mm -hmm. of them will never get better. But that one person is really what helps, you know, make or break them. So that is actually a pretty cool idea. Oh. Yeah, Did thank you. At least I have your are you okay with that? I keep telling different people, I don't know if you want to work. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to start somewhere. And with everything, you give it a try. You know, I always say follow follow what you believe in. And if you believe it'll work and you try it, if it doesn't work, all right, you try. But at least now you know. Or maybe you say, okay, now I know a few things that maybe if I did a little different, it would work. But you have to start yeah. somewhere, you know? That's right. Yes. Yeah. All right. So now, what has fundamentally changed about your work from when you started until now? What did it? What did it change? If you rephrase the, the the question. Mm -hmm. What has fundamentally changed about your work from when you started until now? Like what you do, like from then and now, like what's changed? I think it's technology. Uh, what is the challenge that we get? Um, that we have to be with the technology constantly. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons on TikTok, I don't need another social media. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But I'm going to learn something out of it. Right. Um, so we have to be with the technology. I mean, they're talking about tokenization, uh, blockchain. I mean, I bought a book. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> I, bought a I bought a book and I started reading the book. When I was like a one third, I said, I need another book. <laughs> I need another other book is blockchain for dummies. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> start somewhere. You need to get the basic in order to read that book. Right. So, so there's another book. You say, Dr. Fausto, you say, the more I know, I know that I know less. Yeah. So, my God, I don't know about that. So, that's something that it changed a lot. It's been a lot of benefits in some of the business. Like, for example, my other business, it grew out so fast because the pandemic and the whole thing, it helps. It went up very fast. I mean, now with the properties, uh, it's so easy to do all the research, but you have to learn and you have to know what statistics to take. When you take a statistic, um, you have to know how that number came out. No, you take the statistics because yeah. some statistics, they're basic. They're, they're on the census of 2010 with projection to 2020. You don't want to take that one right. because there were projection in 2010. So you want to take the actual statistics. So all those little things you have, it could be in your favor, but it also could be against you if you don't understand well. So technology is being amazing, but uh, we have to use to catch up with it. We cannot use to stay inside the closet like this is what I know. Mm -mm. Yeah, it changes every single it's day not. and you have to keep on top of it. Yep. So now that being said, how can listeners connect with you? Okay, my uh, my number. I uh, forgot to put them. So, sometimes it's there. Uh, um, my number is three zero five nine nine two seven two eight three nine nine two seven two eight three. 
Okay. Yeah. And I'll, um, put, I'll put a chart at the end of this or a slide on the end of this that gives your number and your email and all that good stuff. So this way okay, people can but, connect with you. Um, and we'll even include the TikTok so they can get your daily book reads. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, kind of behind. I have a few, so I'm getting a little bit more. So I'm never so, making you accountable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, 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 I, always look, I always tell people, buy, don't buy one book. Yeah. It's like uh, when you go to the supermarket, do you buy one grocery? Yeah. But you have a bunch. Yeah. You have a bunch. You get the bread, you get the meal, you get the beans, you get all that. Yeah. It's something for your brain. Yeah, for sure. Buy 10 books, buy five books. Yeah. And, and even, yeah. Even if people say, okay, I don't have the money to go to Barnes, you could go to a thrift store. I mean, you could go anywhere um, and they always yeah. have books. Yeah. There's a, there's a website, three books, I think it is. That's, they're used books. Yeah. And they're perfect condition. Yeah. Besides, what do you care? I mean, it's a book. Yeah. So, so you, as long as you can read it, it's fine. <laughs> and then when you buy those five, ten books, just put it in front of you. Yeah. They didn't talk to you. They're going to talk to you and they're going to say, read me. Read yeah. me. <laughs> and I said, oh my God, I have ten books to read. <laughs> hey, you know what? Think about what would you be doing otherwise? Watching TV, watching yeah. YouTube, you know? <laughs> Do something beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad to, anybody can help. I'll be glad to, to do that. And and any ideas about the program that I'm planning to implement is always welcome. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's always good to get people's thoughts because like you say, maybe they'll have a different idea or say, well, what about if you did this? I think it sounds awesome um, because again, like you say, not everybody has the money to do that. But if they do, um, you know, if they want to do lesser but be accountable, it might give them that incentive to go the extra mile, you know. Uh, something else that I also added to it is uh let's say if it's eight hundred dollars. I, I don't know what the price is gonna be, but if you say eight hundred let's say it's five hundred, I don't know, eight hundred dollars you're an example. Mm -hmm. Up to four people, right? For every person you refer to come to the program, you get a hundred dollars discount. Yeah. So really what what happened there, you're already learning how to expose yourself and to be more extrovert. Right. Because everything is about contacting other people. Mm -hmm. And now, if you believe in what you're doing, you're going to share it with someone. Mm -hmm. you got to believe what you're doing before you go share with someone, sell it, or whatever you want to call them. Right. <clears throat> so that's the, that's the reason of doing that, too. Yeah, so but even gotta... showing, um, I don't want to say Casey, but showing a, a basically like a chart of what you're doing and how you're saving this money and what benefit it is to them. Because sometimes people need to see it and say, okay, well, what are you doing? I got to pay for this here, but you would have paid for this. And here's what I'm giving you for less. And this might help you, you know, progress to the point that you can hire that with no problem. But, you know, we got to start something, you know. Just food for thought. <laughs> there is a chart that we have on the system when we okay. do this uh, business in real estate. Mm -hmm. Once you close a deal, if you're like the lowest earner, on a property, like a $5 million property, mm -hmm. you get about minimum $200,000. It's not a bad, I don't know. That's, that's <laughs> bad. For $500 a month. Wow, yeah. So people, yeah, people should see that. that. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's something that uh, that they need, they need to see how is, how is the structure and how is placed. Right. So, so they can see the value on it. Right. Because... Of course, it doesn't. That's why it's very expensive, I guess. That's yeah. why they're charging forty thousand dollars a year on a coaching yeah. because the return you get it like this on one property. Right. Mm -hmm. so, I guess that's a reason. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you again for being on the show. Again, that was Luis Castillo, director of Royal Estate Investment Group. So thanks for listening to Successful Minds with Patty B. Never miss an episode by subscribing to the show here. I'll provide, provide the link afterwards. And you can also listen via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever it is you listen to your podcast. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Successful Minds with your host, Patricia Barnowski-Schneider. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we'll see you on the next episode.